Hey there, my friend. Good evening. This is Eric J. You are now about to watch video number three in my series about why mass shootings are similar to the Black Plague. And this video is going to comp is going to focus much more on the various options that I could find available for you to become very tactically and technically proficient with regards to any weapon system. So you will not fear the weapon, you will not fear a firearm, but be able to trust it that you can utilize it to your best advantage. So go ahead and take a look at this, as well as uh, go ahead and watch the video all the way through to the very end. I will have a question for you that I'm uh, sure you will enjoy. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the, not the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And go ahead and hit that uh, like button for me so that it'll bump up the YouTube algorithm and get this video in front of more eyes so, they, they, so that any other additional people can benefit from it. Also, if you are a YouTube creator, there is an amazing browser extension that I've been able to find that's been tremendously helpful for me called TubeBuddy. The extension for it is below, but really it provides amazing tools to help you out with finding the best tags for your videos, search engine optimization, as well as different ways to help you craft your thumbnail to really get um, more clicks on your videos. And... Yeah, please go ahead and take a look at that just if you want to really uh, increase your views. Also, if you enjoy podcasts, whether you are driving, running, or whatever you happen to be doing while you're watching a podcast, go ahead and look below at my link. That link is for anchor.fm, but I'm pretty sure that it now has a proliferation on all the major platforms for podcasts, Google, uh Apple or where have you, go ahead and take a look at it at the name of my channel below and I hope you'll enjoy it. So God bless and have a good evening. Now the typical well-intentioned pushes for gun reform are meant to target criminals or those who might have uh, mental health problems for whomever happens to determine the mental health problem. It depends on how much you trust the government and whoever they, uh, whatever criteria that they happen to use to determine if the person's actually danger to themselves or others. Now, considering the black market, even a person with mental health sh issues is not typically an idiot. They can generally put two and two together and then see where the most easiest method of purchasing a firearm happens to be. Whether, uh, in this case, we're talking about the black market because, I mean, there's no, f there's no red tape there. There's no background checks. There's no six-day waiting period. There's no license required to purchase the gun or license to, uh, to purchase, uh, in this case, California ammunition. There is no red tape whatsoever. They just go over to whoever the seller is, even if it's out of someone's, you know, if it's out of the back of someone's sedan or whatever the, whatever the source, have the serial number filed off so it's not traceable, and then they go ahead and make their purchase, purchase their ammunition, and then do whatever they're going to do. So, really, the black market, I mean, the, all these laws that are designed to somehow punish the evildoer, are, they're really not. All it is doing is just delaying people as opposed to, it's just delaying the lawful gun owner, as opposed to the person it's supposed to punish, which is the person who's breaking the law. And like I just showed, it's, it's really not. The only thing it is delaying them is trying to find the black market gun seller. Ultimately, this entire conversation revolves around the concept of vilifying guns simply because it is the most publicly used weapon, the most publicly acknowledged weapon in a crime. I mean, if people were running around with machetes, hacking people to death, there'd be calls for you know, machete bans, and I mean, just to be even more silly, fist bans or whatever. Just be, it, it really depends on what gets the most publicity, it gets the most calls for a ban, because people are not really trying to ban the damage, they're trying to ban violence, and you can't ban violence by law, you can only punish it. Violence itself can only be changed, really, by changing the heart, and that can only be done with, uh, through Christ. Ultimately, having really any restrictions on gun ownership only helps criminals and deters private lawful residents 
from being able to provide for their own defense in a timely manner and quite frankly should be completely done away with. Once you factor in the time frames for the law enforcement officers to respond, factor in the ease of access to criminals uh, with regards to the black market for any kind of firearm and related ammunition, and you trust the law enforcement officers to try and protect you given the response times, you will find that your only most truly effective means of self-protection isn't the law enforcement officer. It is you. Now I know that many people think, well, that is well and good, but I don't know how to use a gun and I really don't feel comfortable around them, which is fine. It's up to personal choice. There are, there are alternatives to guns, although they are not as effective as guns. Tasers, pepper spray, whatever, not, they don't really have the range, but there's something, but not as effective. But they're better than no protection at all. Now, just to reaffirm, previously I mentioned that the Supreme Court and a federal court judge affirmed that police have no constitutional requirement to protect individual citizens and residents. And located below is a link to two separate uh, court cases reaffirming that. But to help you out, there are several options available so that you can protect yourself with firearms to learn how to effectively utilize them. Now, first of all, I want to go ahead and then describe the four weapon safety rules that anybody who's ever been trained on firearms happens to know. You learn these, it does not matter what kind of firearm you have, whether it be a typical small derringer, which is like tiny, or a big 50 caliber sniper rifle, or even uh, a Gatling gun. It, it doesn't matter. These four weapon safety rules will always apply for the sake of your safety. Number one, you treat every weapon as if it were loaded, regardless of if you seem to know in your mind that it is loaded, you treat it if it is loaded, period. Number two, never point your weapon at anything or anyone you do not intend to shoot. You don't, guns are not toys. You don't point at anything or any one you don't intend to shoot. You treat them seriously. You treat them with respect. With respect. Number three, keep your weapon on safe until you intend to fire. If your weapon's on safe, it won't fire, assuming that the mechanism is working correctly. And four, keep your fingers straight and off the trigger until you intend to fire. So if your fingers, if your weapon's both safe and your fingers straighten off the trigger, it will not fire. Period. Is designed to not fire. You can't if you can't pull the trigger because your fingers straighten off the trigger. It won't fire. You for you follow those four weapon safety rules. It's the same thing taught to every person, every person in the military, every person in law enforcement. It is continuously repeated every single year, even quarterly for most law enforcement officers. You learn those. You live by those four weapon safety rules. You will not have an accident with a firearm. You can always be, feel fully confident and safe in owning your firearm. So remember them. Again, always treat your weapon as if it were loaded. Never point a weapon at anything you do not intend to shoot. Keep your fingers straightened off the trigger until you intend to fire. Keep your weapon on safe until you intend to fire. There's no particular order, it's just the ones I happen to memorize it in. Always remember those four. But in, in terms of specific training to teach you how to effectively employ your firearm, there's actually several options. There is, well, the NRA has training classes uh, that you can utilize. You can go to their website. I'll include it in a link below. Um, there's also the United States Concealed Carry Association, which also provides classes. Uh, it's the same. Plus, they also have insurance to help out those people who are concealed carry. So that if, in case they run afoul of the law or is there some kind of an issue, they can rely on them as kind of a form of insurance. There's also um, a very professional gun training uh, academy, for lack of a better term, called Front Sight. Uh, again, a link below for them. Um, that is a very good one, highly uh, uh, highly recommended by pretty much everybody. And obviously, uh, you, I mean, you can, those are just the three majors. You can go to almost any person and they would probably teach you how to, how to uh, effectively employ, uh, employ, weapon, employ a weapon. I mean, I have what, almost two decades worth of experience in the military and law enforcement, I can help out anybody who might, who might want it. But ultimately, yeah. 
the, those three are the are the majors, and like I said, USCCA will really help out. And oh, legislatively, no matter what people seem to think, the NRA they compromise a lot on your gun rights. If I, uh, if you really wanted to back a group that is no compromise and treats your right as a right to own a firearm to provide for your own self defense. Go with the Gun Owners of America. I'll put a link on uh, down at the bottom as well for that. Please take this video for what it is intended. It's simply an exhortation to pr to look out for yourself, protect yourself, provide for your own defense. Don't rely on other people to do it. There's absolutely a need for law enforcement to begin the prosecution, assuming that the perpetrator is still alive after you're done. But the best people to provide for your self-defense is you and those around you who have the who carry who are carrying a firearm to provide for a mutual defense. Well, thank you for joining me. Have a good evening. God bless. Below is a link to the Tom Woods Liberty Classroom, where you can learn more about free market economics, which is espoused by such amazing scholars as Milton Friedman and Murray Rothbard. Thank you for joining me. Make sure you remember to like the video, subscribe, and comment.